or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good I want to talk this morning for just a few minutes the covenant keeping God the covenant keeping God Father as we stand here in your presence speak this word in the lives of these people let this be a word a seed sown in good ground so that when they hear it they may bring forth fruit some 30 some 60 some 100 fold we bind every spirit that would try to subvert the preaching and the hearing of the gospel and we say today that we have preeminence in this house move and speak to us and we glorify you and magnify you in Jesus name Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, tell God thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. The covenant keeping God. Amen. Young lady sitting back there in the back with the baby on your lap. Praise the Lord. I don't know what your financial status is. Glory to God. But the Lord told me to let you know, hallelujah, that I definitely see a wealth status above your head. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Which means, Amen. glory to God, you're Amen. getting ready to walk in a higher level than what you're walking in right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Some things that you've been asking God to take care of, God says, I got it under control. And I heard the Holy Ghost say, he said, I see him like this. He said, I'm going to do it just like that. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, sometimes we labor over a thing and we mull over it, praise God, yes. trying to get it to come to pass. But God said, I'm going to do it. Just like that. Somebody Amen. give God praise. Amen. Amen. God give me a few minutes. Praise Amen. When you feel good like this, Elder Lewis, it don't do too good to do too much talking, praise the Lord. You might get in trouble, praise the Lord. God, a man, has always desired to be in relationship with mankind. Lord, I praise you. God has always desired a man to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship to where you can talk to him and he could talk to you. You see, in the beginning, God sat as king of the universe. Praise the Lord. And there were angels who were ministering spirits, but they were not created in the image of God. And so God had no one to talk to in that fashion or relate. Have you ever just wanted to talk to somebody that could just understand where you're coming from? Yeah. Now, if you've been in the house with children all day long, you are dying for some adult conversation. Amen. You're tired of goo goo gang gang and A, B, C, D, E, and you want to hear, amen, something of some substance. And, and, and God says, I want a man to create man and I'm going to make him in my image and him being created in his image means that he is a speaking spirit amen like God what God did he took the essence of himself amen and placed it in dust praise him. and the only reason why he placed it in dust so that we could recognize that what he gave us was a treasure in an earthen vessel Amen. He did not allow us to stay in spirit form, but he put us, amen, in a body. Praise God. And his desire, amen, was to have a relationship with mankind. The Bible tells us, amen, that in the cool of the day, praise the Lord, that he would walk with Adam and talk with Adam, praise God, and Eve, praise God, and would conversate. And through, amen, the sin and disobedience of Adam and Eve, they fell from their relationship, praise amen. God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And God had always, if you look at the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, it is a story, a man telling of a God wooing people trying to get back into a relationship with him. Hallelujah. But the sad part about it is, glory to God, that there are so many things in this life that sometimes takes precedent over our desire for a relationship with God. And all God is trying to do is to get your attention attention so he can talk to you and tell you about the great and wonderful blessings that he has for you that got your name on it. I want to just tell you 
and dispel the myth of so many religious folk today. And I'm going to get into this message, praise God. But I want you to understand, God is not trying to kill you. God wants to bless you. And God wants you to live. Hallelujah. Amen. You around somebody that always are doom and gloom about God, they don't know God. That's right. Because if God wanted to kill you, you'd be dead. Yep. That's right. Come on, somebody. Amen. But instead, you ought to take time and look at how many times you should have been dead, but you're still alive right now. How many times that if the enemy had have had his way, you would have been in the ground six feet under prayer. But you are alive because God wants you alive. Amen. Amen. Tell you, I know the thoughts that I have towards you. Yes. Huh? Thoughts of peace. Huh? Glory to God. I want to prosper you. I want to give you an expected end. Amen. So God has always desired a relationship with man. But we first see this thing called covenant. Amen. When God begins to deal with Abraham. Everybody knows Abraham, right? Amen. He is our father. Let me help you understand. The word covenant is a formal, serious agreement or promise. Amen. It is written between two or more people. Amen. Or business or countries, praise the Lord. And it is usually a solemn binding agreement in which each individual promises to do something to be in relationship. Just like marriage. Marriage is a covenant, praise the Lord. Amen. In the covenant, you say, I will if you will, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Y'all ain't hearing me today. Amen. And so God, amen, begins. Amen. To find this nomad in the land of Ur. He, amen, is a pagan. Uh, Abraham is not a Jew, praise the Lord. Abraham was a pagan. Abraham, praise God, was in the land of Babylon. He, praise the Lord, worshipped many other false deities in God. Hallelujah. But God, out of his sovereign at the will, amen, calls this nomad named High Father, amen, and says, I want you to leave your father's house. I want you to leave your country, and I want you to leave your kindred and go to a land that I'm going to show you uh, that you don't know anything about. I praise God. And he tells him, I will make your name great. He says, I will bless you, Aunt Barbara. He says, and praise God, those that bless you, I'm going to bless them. And those that curse you, I'm going to curse them. And I'm going to make your seed great. And, and all nations of the earth are going to be blessed by your seed, Abraham. And Abraham, praise God, believed God and left his land and sought for a city whose building and maker was God. Y'all ain't hear me today. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And, and as we look into the life of Abraham, he is about 75 years of age when God has, amen, told him to get out of his land. Praise God. And as he journeys on into the land of Canaan, praise God, he's about 80 some odd years of age and God speaks to him. Praise God. And Abraham, you know, he talks to God because him and, and God are on a, a, a first name basis praise God. And Abram said, you know what, God? Uh -huh. You sure have been good to me. Amen. You blessed me real good. Uh -huh. The Bible said Abram was very rich Amen. in cattle and silver and gold. Oh, yeah. He Amen. wasn't broke. Come on, somebody. Yes. He had it going on. Come on, somebody. Amen. Everywhere he went, folk just wanted to bless him. When he went up into Egypt, they got scared, praise God, because they tried to take his wife. Found out that the woman was actually his wife and not just his sister, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And they, they gave him some gifts and sent him away. You know you can be so blessed, beloved, that folk that do you wrong have to bless you before they send you away, praise the Lord. Oh, y'all not hearing me, praise God. Hallelujah. The ones that talked about you and put your name out, them are the ones that got to come in and be a blessing. Oh! If you know that somebody is anointed and has the favor of God on their life, be careful how you talk about them. Hallelujah. Because you will end up having to bless them. Amen. Before you move forward. There are some folks sitting here today. You're stuck because you put your mouth on a man of God. Praise the Lord. And God said, you got to go back and bless the one that you put your mouth on. You got to bless them. Praise God. And I ain't talking about that when I bless your man. I know you got to come out and be a Blessing. Amen. Oh, yeah. Say so. Yeah. To put your mouth on somebody that God 
it fall. The only things used to say those things and tell you, your mouth will call for a stroke, baby. Go ahead. Ain't that right? We used to fear God and his servants, but we don't have that fear anymore because you ain't been taught the covenant and the principles of God. Go ahead. I feel like preaching today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He said, God, you sure been good to me. He said, but you know, you gave me all this stuff. And I'm getting ready to die. And when I die, I ain't got nobody to leave it to. Amen. I ain't got nobody. He said, the, only, the closest thing that I got to an heir is one of my servants, Eliezer. And he was a servant born in my house. And so I, I guess I got the right my will to leave it to Eliezer. You know, he's a faithful servant. But then God, amen, speaks a word to him. And he says, Eliezer is not going to be your heir. He said, praise God, there's going to come, amen, an heir out of your loins. Y'all ain't hear me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, you know, it sounded impossible because Abram was an old man and his wife Sarah was an old woman, praise God. And they had passed the time of childbearing. But how many of you understand that God gives you a promise in a season where it doesn't even look like it is possible? If you are looking at a barren season in your life, if you're looking at a place where they're about to cut your lights off, if you're looking at a place where you can't have you so much you got so much debt and you're so broke you can't even pay attention. I want you to understand that you're in a great season for God to show his power in your life. God will allow it to get desperate so that he can bless you in a manner so that no man can take the glory, that no man can take the credit and say, I'm the one that did it. You know when folks bless you, Elder Lewis, they want to kind of take the credit for it. You know, hey, I'm the one that did this and I'm the one that did this. Hallelujah, but Abram told him, Hallelujah, the king of Sodom and Gomorrah. He said, I ain't going to even take a shoelace. Don't even give me your shoelace. Let you say, I'm the one that made you bless. In other words, if you're going to give me something and talk about it, hey man, keep it to yourself. Because the God that I serve is able to bless me apart from your foolishness. I ain't got to lower my credibility. I ain't got to lower my in order to be blessed by God. God got a blessing that got my name on it. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. God. Eliezer is uh -huh. not going to be your end. Uh -huh. Lord, I praise you. Amen. Lord, God, he said, but your end will come out of your mouth. Yeah. He's not telling you, baby. Come out here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Abram, I want you to take a look. Look up there. Look. Don't look ridiculous. Why am I looking up in the sky, God? Well, you see all them stars up there? You see all of them? Orion and the Little Dipper and the Milky Way. You see all them stars up there? He says, uh, Count if you can. Lord, I can't count the stars. There's too many. Amen. He said, well, if a man could count the stars of the sky and number, your seed that you're going to have would be number. In other words, I swear I'm going to bless you. Ah, God, how do I know? Well, I ain't got nobody to swear by. There's nobody that's my equal. Hallelujah. I can't swear by the earth because the earth <laughs> is my footstool. And I can't swear by the heavens because the heavens is my throne. <laughs> I can't swear by nothing else because I'm the greatest. <laughs> so I tell you what, Abraham, <laughs> I'm going to swear by my own self. I swear by my own name, Elohim El Shaddai. I swear that I'm going to bless you. And you're going to have a seed. And that was enough for Abram. For the Bible says Abraham believed in God. And God made him righteous. Not that Abraham was a righteous man. Hallelujah. Abraham come from a jacked up family. Hallelujah. He come from a bad past. 
past. Hallelujah. But because he believed in God, God says, I'm willing to take your faith and put it on your account as a righteous man. Who am I preaching to in here today? You got a past that you don't want to tell nobody about. I know you're sitting up here looking all sanctified and all greasy today. That you have pride and it ain't to the side. But if the truth be told, there's some stuff that you did. And if it would come on the screen right now, you would find a hole to follow me. Come on and say amen. Come on. 
house. And I already had it in Babylon. Uh -huh. Turned me into a wandering no man. Mm -hmm. Talking about a lane. Mm -hmm. I don't know where it is, but okay. I'm following him. Mm -hmm. And now he has this crazy notion yes. that I'm going to have a baby. Amen. Look at me. <laughs> Ain't no baby coming from me. But you know, Abraham, you know that pretty little girl that we picked up in Egypt? You know you've been looking at her all the while. <laughs> Hallelujah. I tell you what, Abraham, I'm going to give her to you. Hallelujah. And you're going to, you know, marry her. You're going to have a child with her. And that child, that will be the heir of the promise. You know, when you don't believe, you do crazy stuff. Yes. Like give your man into the arms of another woman. That's crazy. Yes. 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 Glory to God. And Abraham said, well, okay. okay. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Glory to God. Now, mind you, God already told him. Read, read the scripture. God already told him that he was going to do it. Hallelujah. But he said, well, I, 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 all right, sir. You know, you know, God speaks to you too, sir. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless our God. He got cozy with Sister Hagar. And got a baby. Ain't that right? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And in the process of time, amen, while, amen, Hagar had that baby, then God visited Sarah just like he said. And lo and behold, she popped up and got pregnant. And when she had Isaac, and Isaac had grown to win, amen, you saw Ishmael and Isaac in the same house, amen, and Ishmael was teasing Isaac. And Sarah looked at that boy, the plan with her son, you know, Isaac might have had a big head, you know, and Ishmael was probably teasing him. You know how children do with one another. You know, the oldest one always teasing the youngest one and bullying them around. But she caught a glimpse and saw something. She saw that if Ishmael stayed in my house, she gonna, he going to kill my son in order to get the blessing. I want to help you understand something. Hallelujah. Your effort, hallelujah, and God's promise cannot live in the same house. God is not going to let what you have contrived and what he has planned, amen, stand in the same house. And so Sarah got mad one day and she went over to Abraham and said, listen, you better can't put her out. Put the help out. There are some things that if you deal with it, when it's small, 
Yeah. It won't be an issue. Mm -hmm. But there's some of you that are dealing with stuff in your life right now. Uh -huh. That if you had handled it when it was little. Come on, somebody. Yeah. If you bent that sapling. Hallelujah, when it was small, when it was a sapling, you would have to cut it down as a tree. Yeah. What God is trying to tell you, amen, the blessing that I have that got your name on it, glory to God. Glory to God, there are some things that you got surrounding it that is not, doesn't mean that I ain't going to bless you, but you won't be able to enjoy the blessing because you'll be too busy putting out fires, amen, because you got something that's not supposed to be there. God says, I'm not going to bless your idea because your idea means that you take the credit and the glory for it. But God says, when I do the thing, I'm going to do that thing so good that you're going to know it couldn't have been nobody but me. I'm going to do that thing so good that every time you think about it, tears will start rolling down your face. God said, I'm going to do that thing so good you can be right on 540 and you think about it and the hands will go up and you have to grab the wheel because you let the wheel go. Hallelujah. I'm going to do that thing so good. Hallelujah. That when the enemy come in like a flood, hallelujah, you won't even pay him no mind because God Number three, God's promises 
are transgenerational. In other words, God's promises go beyond generations. And then number four, his promises are immutable. In other words, his promises are unchanging. God is a God of covenant. God cannot lie. His promises are transgenerational and they are immutable. We've already, amen, proven that God is a covenant God. He made a covenant with Abraham. He made a covenant with the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt. He made a covenant with David. He told David that there shall not ever fail you a man to sit on your throne. So we understand that God is in the covenant making business. But then you need to come to the second point that God cannot lie. You see, the reason why we don't understand that, praise the Lord, is because we compare God to man. <laughs> but God is not a man. <laughs> Let me tell you something about Negroes. They will tell you a lie looking you dead in your face. And don't even intend to do what they said that they're going to do. <laughs> Come on, say amen. <laughs> Hallelujah, man will lie to you. <laughs> but God cannot lie. <laughs> what do you mean? Do you mean he will not lie? <laughs> no, I mean he like, yeah. What do you mean, Pastor? Yeah. In other words, huh. glory be to God, it is not in his DNA. Yeah. It is not in his makeup. Yeah. People say God can't do nothing. Yeah. He can't do, and he can do anything but fail. Yeah. Yeah. But I beg to differ. Yeah. God cannot lie. Yeah. Yeah. So that's at least one thing God can't do. Yeah. Yeah. Why can't God lie? Yeah. Because everything yeah, that comes out of God's mouth is the truth. Yeah. Jesus said, I am the way, yeah, the truth, and the life. Yeah. If God spoke to you yeah, and said that the sky is purple, yeah, immediately it would be purple. Yeah, because he is God. Yeah. If God, yeah. I'll give you another example. Yeah. When he went down to the tomb of Lazarus, yeah. hey God, yeah. they told us yeah, that he had to call Lazarus by name yeah, and say, Lazarus, come forth. Yeah. Because had he not spoken his name directly, every dead thing around there would have had to get up and walk out of the tomb. Hallelujah. Because God tells the truth. God is so much God that when he got ready to make Ahab fall at the battle of Ramoth Gilead, he said, who shall persuade Ahab to go up and fall at the battle? And he looked around and God said, I can't lie myself. Because if I tell it, it's going to be the truth. He said, but a lion spirit. God is so much truth. He had to use a lion spirit. He made me get the job done. I want to help you understand something. That God can't lie. God cannot lie. Is there anybody in here today that got a promise from God? Let me see you wave your hand. Who told you he was going to do some stuff? Just got to stand right there and wait on him, praise God. 
Ha, y'all in here. Me. Glory to God. We quote Job when he said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. And we quote it as if, amen, God is going to slay us. But sometimes things in the Bible are truly stated, but they're not always a statement of truth. In other words, Job actually said it, but it was not true about God. And how do I know it's not true? Because God did not slay him. God saved him alive, and he blessed him in his latter end, greater than the beginning. Oh, but you can be going through so much hell and it feel like God is against you. You can be going through so much trouble and feel like God has forgotten about you. Do I have anybody that understands what I'm talking about? God is saying, man, I'm glad you're talking to me. And I've been in a situation where it felt like God amen, has forgotten about me. But the one that have served God can tell you he never failed me yet. He never failed me yet. Jesus Christ never failed me yet. Everywhere I go, I want the world to know. Jesus Christ never failed. He never failed me yet. Good God Almighty. But everybody can't say that. But he's been through another storm in your life. You know that he's God of the storm. He's the master of the sea. God is on my side. And I won't be what man will do to me. The Lord is my life and my salvation. God Almighty. Somebody pray 
generation. Abraham fought on the next generation. That's why God, he said, I know Abraham, but he will command his house after him. In other words, he had the ability to transmit, hallelujah, the truth of God to his generation. For y'all to hear Could you imagine little Jacob sitting on the knee of Abraham, his granddaddy? Ooh. And you know, God bless Abraham so ridiculously. I asked him in class on Wednesday, I said, how many sons did Abraham have? And I said, well, Isaac and Ishmael, two. I don't know. I said, Abraham had eight sons. Eight sons. One born by Hagar. Come on, somebody. One born by Sarah. And then six born by Keturah. Is that right? Amen. Now check this out, praise the Lord. Abraham's body was considered dead. No life. Nothing they had. He did not have no blue pills back then. You ain't hear what I'm telling you. But he staggered not at the promise of God. So that the supernatural power of God lighted on him yes. and Sarah got pregnant. Yes. But he didn't just stop with Sarah. Because yes. when he buried Sarah, here come Couture. Yes. And, and Couture had six children. Yes. God will do exceedingly yes. and abundantly yes. above all that you can ask or think. Yes. In other words, God not just going to bless you. He going to really bless you. And he's going to exceed your expectations. Yes. Last point. Uh -huh. And I'm really finished. <coughs> Whew, this is good to me. God's promises are immutable. Yes. Which means they are unchangeable. In other words, God don't get you in the middle of a thing and then change your phone. You ever met people like that? We promise some stuff and then get in the middle and they want to change the terms of the agreement. That's why you need lawyers nowadays. The folk change on you. They lie. Amen. 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 Right, somehow God gonna bless the church. We're gonna get big. Let me tell you something. At a church that gets big, the bigger you get, the more issues you have. You gotta, you gotta make sure you got some lawyers on you. Yes. Somebody gonna try to slip and fall and sue you. And they think you got money. I'm trying to help you understand. With, with the bigger your blessing, the greater your responsibility. Some of you pray, oh, Lord, I, I need a bit, but you ain't ready to receive no blessing. Lord, I'm tired of being alone. I want a husband. Are you ready to be a wife? I, I, I need a wife. Are you ready to be a husband? Won't work in a pot factory and you want to be somebody's husband. The word husband. Oh, 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 I should have shouted while you had a chance. The word husband means covering. I cover you. Come on, somebody. I cover you. You ain't got no business out there in the rain having to pump your own gas. Amen. Huh? Amen. Or change your own tire. Amen. Go ahead. I I got this bill to pay where your money is. Wow. Oh. Oh, yeah. Preach. If she won't help you, that's good. But that's not her job to do that. Amen. You want the blessing, but you don't want the responsibility of the blessing. You're asking, you're like, Lord, I need a big house, Lord. Just send me out. But you don't want to believe God for the payments. If God will give you a big house, 
Amen. Hey praise God. Believe him for the payments too. Amen. Like if you don't have to do nothing but pay taxes, you got to pay something. Yeah. God's promises are immutable. He don't say he's gonna do exactly what he said he's gonna do. But while you're waiting, could you could you have ever thought that the reason why you're having to wait so long for the promise to be fulfilled that God is trying to get you to a place of maturity so you can receive it. Yep. Amen. Yep. I know God calls me preacher. Mm -hmm. No, you put me on a great platform. I know I can see myself mm -hmm. preaching to the nations. Okay. How are you going to preach to the nations? And you can't even be faithful in your local home assembly. Somebody got to have a, a, a flashlight to find you. You ain't faithful. God gonna bless me with money. You don't pay tithes off the money you get. You thief. You robber. God said, bring you all tithes into my storehouse. Oh, I'm preaching better y'all saying amen. amen. See, 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 we want the blessing of the Lord, but we don't want the responsibility. Amen. He's a covenant God. Yes. And the covenant means I do something and you do something. Yes. Right. Right now. Praise the Lord. Since I give seed to the soul. I'm finished now. I, I, I don't preach my own self happy. Whether you happy or not, that's your business, praise God. Amen. I mean, he, he, he said, praise the Lord. Glory to God. My promises, my, my covenant will not break. Hallelujah. You know all of the words that come out of my mouth. Check this out. Amen. He gives seed to the soul and bread to you. Hallelujah. God trusts you with finances and money. And most times we preach we don't like to talk about money because folks think we money grubbing and I promise you. If I was in this for the money, I would have quit a long time ago. Yeah, that's right. Praise God. So I really want to help you. I want to bless you today. Come on, say amen. amen. His, his covenant says this. Bring ye all titles into the storehouse. And then prove me, saith the Lord, if I will not open you the window of heaven and pour you out blessings. A blessing. That's one blessing. Uh -huh. Look at it. You'll see that there shall not be room enough to receive. The moment you say, well, the tithe is under the law. No, baby, the tithe came through the law. The first person that paid a tithe was Melchizedek. Was Abraham to Melchizedek. Abraham is the father of faith. God blessed him for his ability to give. Look, and I'm getting ready to help. Y'all shout all over the church and go back home, bro. Uh -huh. <laughs> help us, help us. What tithing does when you give God a tenth, he says, I will rebuke the devourer. Yes. Well, what is a devourer? With me. All my farmers, praise God, ever farm, you know that when you sow precious seed in the ground and it come up, praise God, you got birds, you got moles, sometimes the deer come and eat your corn. All kind of critters come to eat up your harvest. Those are the devourers. God says that if you will pay your tithe, if you'll give me a tenth of your increase, he says what I will do, praise the Lord, I will rebuke the devourer. Yeah. So that when you get what you're supposed to get, everything will come to you that's supposed to come to you. Amen. 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 Yeah, but look at folk that look like, like that. Every hand they got, they just went there. They so out. And when it's so, it's like God just blessed like yes, you. Yes, and, you, yes. you, you, and you, you, every time you get something like, when it looked like that, that big windfall, that big piece of money getting ready to come in, all of a sudden your car break down. Wow. You see how people got quiet in there? I'm talking about money. Praise God. When I, when I told y'all God was going to bring you out bless, I get, now I'm telling you, your responsibility, you turn your ears off. It ain't going to work unless you do what you're supposed to do. Well, you know God, he know my heart, so he does a, it's a covenant. My covenant will I not break. And the words will I not alter that come out of my, God ain't going to alter them just because well, I just don't think I ought to have to pay no time. 
They don't know what you think. I'm telling you what the word said. Well, I told you know, Pastor, I just I went through a rough season. You know, I'm just gonna, you know, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take my time and I'm gonna catch up on that light beer. You know. The problem is next month you're gonna have you're gonna still have that light beer. So yeah. And you're gonna have paid your light bill with God's money. And now you are living under a curse. Yeah. And the curse is God can't rebuke the devourer. Amen. The devourer, there's something else going to pile up on. Yeah. And then you look around yourself and you say, Lord, I'm just going to heap of trouble. Yeah. Yeah. I'll catch up next month. Next month never comes. My God will supply all of your needs according to his wisdom. If you either believe God or you don't believe God. I tell you what, I'm, I'm quick. I'm, I'm, I'm really going to because I'm good now. I'm feeling right now. I'm going to take my time because you know there's so many homeless and needy people out here at this time of year, I'm going to take my tents and I'm going to give it to the homeless. First of all, I'm, I'm teaching you. I'd be, I'd be a terrible pastor if I don't tell you the truth. The tithe does not belong to the need. The tithe belongs to the house of God. And the tithe does not belong to you. It is not yours to decide what to do with your tithe. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You bring your tithe to, he told you exactly where to bring your tithe to. Amen. What you talking about is arm. There is a difference between a tithe and an arm. For your reference, if you're taking notes, write down the sixth chapter of the book of Matthew. Amen. Alms giving is giving to the poor. Amen. And when you give to the poor, the Bible says you're not supposed to let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. Amen. Why? Because when somebody is going through a difficult season, Elder Lewis, you want to protect their dignity. You help them, you know, pay the mortgage on their house because they're about to, you know, you don't tell, you don't tell, well, I just, I just helped Brother Travis save his house. <laughs> The Bible says when you do that, you have your reward. Huh? That's, that's an arm. And the rate of exchange on an arm is the other for dollar or reimbursement. The Bible says he that give to the poor, lend it to God. And God will repay. He will reimburse you. But if you tell what you did, you already have your reward. So if you take your time and move it from the tithing column and give it to the poor, you are no longer giving the tithe, you're giving an alm. Amen. So you get a reimbursement of what you gave as an alm, but you don't get the protection of the vowel being rebuked. Amen. Because God does not alter the words. It doesn't change. See, y'all don't want to believe it, but I'm just telling you like, well, what about grace? Grace ain't got nothing to do with principles. Amen. If we really, and I'm finishing, I'm not closing. If we really understood the blessing it is to not only be a giver to the house of God, but to be a giver to other people who are in trouble. If we really understood what it was like to be a giver, and you would take your mind off of your own selfish self Amen. all the time. Amen. Amen. Some of us don't give because we just always stuck on ourselves. Uh -huh. If you really understood that every time you give, you put something in your spiritual account, you would be you'd be like, Richard, hurry up and sit down so I can give. <laughs> when I would say, when I would say it's often time, church of God, y'all would go, ah, you'll go crazy. Because you know it's a, it, see, people talking about I'm gonna reap a harvest. What's that song? It's my seed. Not that one, the other one. To reap what I have sown. It's working, yeah. If you ain't sold nothing, you ain't gonna reap nothing. You ain't gave nothing all year long. You ain't blessed nothing, nobody, no church, no nothing. 
You always got your hand out. You always want somebody to give you something. You ain't going to have nothing. The Bible said the poor you'll have with you always. But it didn't say I had to be one of them. Stand to me, King. I'm finished. See, I can't, I can't just preach this. I got to take time to teach you. Now, come on these wheels tonight and let me break this down to you. Help you understand. God will perform his word in your life. What I'm telling you today, whether it's in giving, whether it's trusting God, 